Welcome into Buccaneers Total Access from the Hooters Owl's Nest. I am joined by kicker and punter, the two duos, the amazing guys that make up our special teams unit, Jake Camarda and Ryan Suckup. Thank you guys so much for joining us. This is going to be so fun. Thanks for having us, Case. Excited. Look at your face. Yeah, You're so excited. I'm fired up. <laughs> This is great. So you guys had a heck of a game. I feel like the timing could not have been better to have you on the show. Um, first of all, we got to start with the guy that got the game ball, oh, Mr. Camarda. No. How was that moment? It was cool. It was definitely cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, man, a few words. Man, yeah, a few yeah, words yeah. over man here. Words. Really glad we picked you for a radio show, man. Right? You know? Perfect. Perfect. Right. <laughs> perfect choice. Okay, come on. Tell me the moment that you get the game ball as a rookie, as a punter, which I feel like a lot of things that don't always happen. All in one for you. Tell me what that moment was like. It was cool. I mean, there's, I, I don't know what else to say. I was really just excited that we won. Yeah. That was probably the, the coolest part of the, the whole ordeal. But it was, it was cool that, you know, I was able to, to get that. I mean, obviously, I win that, but like, that's not just me. Like, that, that's so many more people that are around me that, that, you know, go into that. But it was definitely a cool moment. So I don't remember for forever. I do feel like for you, it is always unfortunate for punters how it feels like personal success and team success can be a little bit at odds with each other. Um, and was that cool for you in particular that your best game also gets to come at a win? Because I think for punters, a lot of times that's not necessarily the case. No, I mean, it, you know, Bowles likes, loves to talk about playing complimentary football. And, um, you know, complimentary football is if, you know, let's say the offense doesn't do great, then... <clears throat> I'll come on and our team and our unit can come in and, and do something good and then that complements the defense and the defense plays good and all in all that leads to us getting the ball back with good field position that we can go and score so it's all it's all part of the, that whole complimentary football deal so yeah. it's, it's cool. So tell me about particularly your 74 yard bomb that first of all was your third punt in 30 seconds, which I'm sure is already a lot at that yeah. point. Take, take me through that sequence and what that was like as those penalties happened and then when you realized you had just gotten a 74-yard punt. I honestly felt like we were back in Dallas because <laughs> yeah. um, we, we kind of done this before in a sense and, and had three punts in, a, in one punt yeah. essentially. So I think it's kind of wild to say that we've done that. You know that it's been like a second time we've done that this yeah. year, but it's just uh, it was it was interesting, it was intriguing, um, something that obviously doesn't happen a lot. Um, but I'll say one thing: really, really cool that you know, as a unit, we were able to face you know a little bit of adversity. But you know, and you know, punts a long down, and to be able to come back, you know, a third time after we had already had a little bit of adversity in the beginning, to be able to come back and just be able to handle business, that was. That was cool. So yeah. that, that was that was the coolest part is that we were able to keep our composure at yeah. the end of the day and, and be able to go out there and perform. And Ryan, for you, uh, fifty yarder, something that you're just making seem casual these <laughs> days. Uh, and I mean, you're now ten for eleven on field goals over forty yards. Uh, you tied a career long earlier this year, fifty four. Um, what has felt so good for you this year on longer kicks and kicks in particular? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, first of all, kind of like Jake mentioned, it's a, it's a team effort. You know, Zach does such a great job. Jake does such a great job holding for me. You know, the big boys up front protecting. You know, it, it all goes together. And so they, they kind of make my job easier and allow me to go out there and just be free. And, um, you know, it's been – I've really enjoyed the process of, of um, you know, trying to – trying to keep getting better every year. Um, you know, right before this, I was over, you know, doing some tissue work with the, with the TV 12 guys and, you know, the stuff we do here in the, in the training room and in the weight room and um, – you know, just doing all those things, trying to trying to make sure I'm as prepared as I can be and uh, and feeling good. But yeah, it's been been a great year so far. Do you feel like that kind of stuff maybe in the off season also helped contribute to what you've done this year? Have, have you changed anything up uh, in the off season or this year in particular? Yeah, I think you know, you're uh, one of the things I really enjoy is the the kind of the process of trying to figure out new ways to get better and improve. And I think that starts with training. It starts with nutrition. There, there's a lot of things that go into that. Um, and yeah, I, I, I enjoy that. I enjoy the challenge there. And um, it's been cool to kind of see that pay off so far. And I know um, the blocked kick, that's been one of your, I mean, you've been so reliable this year. That's one of your only quote unquote misses. Um, what happened on that play in particular? And then why is that something that I know you guys have done a really great job of avoiding to this point, especially doing as many long kicks as you have? 
Yeah, I think, uh, you know, sometimes in this game, sometimes other teams just make great plays. Yeah. And, um, you know, their guy just made a great play. And, that, you know, that's all you can do about that. And, uh, you know, we'll uh, be ready to rock and roll this week. What's that like for you in that moment when you see, like, do you see him flying or are you so focused on the ball you don't even know until after you've kicked it? How does that work for you in that moment? Yeah, so, I, you know, my eyes are on the ball. Yeah, and, um, probably, so, yeah probably good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Otherwise, so, the life would be flashing uh, before the that's eyes. Right, that's right. So, um, you know, I didn't. I obviously couldn't see it live or anything yeah. like that. But, um, yeah, it felt, you know, it was a great snap. Jay did a great job holding. Um, man felt like he hit, hit a great ball. I was excited to see it. And then, uh, you know, unfortunately, that one just didn't work out for us. I know that you're also leading the league in made field goals overall. Part of that is that this offense has needed a lot of field goals. Part of that is, is your consistency and reliability there. It's kind of a twofold thing. But, um what have you felt like the team has has thought about your performance this year in terms of how nice it is for them to know that as much as they're wanting maybe the red zone touchdown, that consistency and reliability of knowing that they have you to fall back on on that? And, and what has maybe led to, in your mind, that consistency and reliability of it's not just the long kicks, it's you've just had such consistency on everything? Um. You know, I think, like I said, I think a lot of the guys around me deserve a lot of the credit for that, you know, and, and a lot of that is, is the offense going down and, and, and getting drives, and I know we would like to score more touchdowns, but they are still, you know, getting us in position to put points on the board. So, um, you know, we try to go out there each and every week and, uh, you know, when our number's called, be ready. And that's, I think, that's the only thing that we can do. And, um, you know, hopefully we'll be able to uh, continue contributing to, to a lot of wins. We're talking to our punter and kicker, Jake Camarda and Ryan Suckup. So for you guys... What is the mental side of game prep like? We talked about the idea of getting the tissue work and the physical stuff. And we hear a lot more, I think, about other positions in terms of what their meetings are like, what their film sessions are like. So I'd love to hear for each of you, and we can start with you, Jake, on as you prepare for a game, when there's meetings, when there's film, when there's all of that, explain what that's like for people who have no idea. I think for us it's a lot different than it is for a bunch of other positions because for us – it's very, very specifically based on, like, one thing, and which is what we're doing. And so for us, you know, we're pretty much going through every single week watching not just the other team, but we're watching a lot of us mm. to see what we're doing yeah. all the time because our job doesn't really change, and we're just watching us and us and us and mm -hmm. us to see what we're doing, what we need to fix, what we need to change. So for our preparation, a lot of times is like, watching what we do right. a lot so because it doesn't always end up being watching as much as what the other team does mm -hmm. because there's a lot of times where we're in a position that if we're doing what we're supposed to do we yeah, can kind of no con control mm -hmm. a lot of the game um so whether it comes to you know the part of watching the other team of watching the return or what they do what their schemes are what their block patterns are all that kind of stuff versus what we do it's it kind of it's just it's a little different in a yeah. sense because of how much we watch us. I think a lot of other guys probably watch the other team and how much they do and mm -hmm. what they do, but that's where I think it's just a little bit different for yeah. us. Yeah. So what are some of those things for you in particular that you feel like you find yourself watching a lot of about yourself? Just watching the basics of you know what my hands are doing, my steps, uh, where my drops at um, on kickoff, what my steps look like, uh, my pace, my speed coming into the ball, all that kind of stuff. It just just kind of like the little nitpicky things that, you know, not a lot of people would, would notice or think about, but the things that we think about that, you know, help make us successful. Is that the same for you, Ryan? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, Jake said it best. We're, <laughs> we're uh, you know, I think we try to control the things that, that we can control. Right. And, and a lot of that's our technique and, you know, staying in good rhythm. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of what we focus on. I feel like all football players are creatures of habit to a degree. But I imagine that for you guys it might be even more so than everybody else. Do you guys have certain um, routines for in-game in the moment when you're actually about to do your job and then also maybe even pre-game leading up to it? Do you, do you feel like you are big creatures of habit and, and routine guys for both of you? Ryan. Uh oh, this, is, this feels like maybe. Yeah, um, yeah. I think yeah, I, I certainly am, and I think one of the things I try to do is um, I try to move around as much as I can so that I don't have to hit as many balls. I'm trying to stay warm, you know, by moving and some stretches and stuff like that, because um, I don't want to sit on the sideline and, and hit a million balls into the net all game. So uh, for me, that's something you know, particularly as my career has gotten longer, and, you know, I've gone on. I try to limit the balls in the net and, and just stay moving. I'll run up and down the sideline a few times every time we get the ball on offense and. Um, if we pick up a couple first downs, then I'll, I'll go over and hit a ball into the net and, and try to be ready to roll if we, if we go out and kick a field goal or, or PAT. Yeah, and how about you, Jake? 
you know, honestly, for me, it kind of changes game to game. Yeah. Uh, sometimes you, even, you haven't been doing this long enough to develop no, a routine I mean, yet. I mean, some, you know, sometimes I'm 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 up and moving. Yeah. If I feel like I need to be, you know, moving. If I feel like my body's feeling a little like sluggish on the day, I'll be like, all right, hey, I need to just do just do whatever you did yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. Just yeah whatever it. that sometimes, was. Sometimes, There's sometimes your new routine. To, yeah. Sometimes right. you need to rip some high knees on the sideline. Sometimes I come to the sideline. I'm like, you know what? I need to sit down. I'm for a sit down. Bit. Yeah. Just you know. Give the legs a break. So. Is that that you know young whippersnapper mindset over here? <laughs> yeah, it's uh, before the old man that's, that's, strategy. That's, that's, kicks that's right. In. <laughs> that's right. Come, come see me in a couple of years, Jack. We'll see what it looks yeah. like. I'm keeping him young. That's yeah, right. oh, is that what it is? One hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. So how about we talk? I, I led with routine because what I feel like always happens is I ask this question: I, Are you superstitious? And it turns into no, but I have my routines. So we got the routine part out of the way. Separate from that, are you too superstitious? Because I think specialists more than any other position group seem to have that be a bit of a tendency. What would you say for each of you guys, Ryan? Yeah, I'm not. No. Um, yeah, I'm not superstitious. So, um, you know, I think one of the things I'll, I'll always do before a game is, um, and even during a game, I pray. I pray during games. So um, that's something that has helped give me peace and give me focus and really allow me to go out and, and play free. But, um, yeah, so I would say I'm probably the opposite of, of superstitious. And Jake? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm going to just – Relay right off yeah, of what same. he said. Yeah. I think that I definitely wouldn't consider myself to be a very superstitious person. Um, he'd probably agree with that because I probably change a whole lot of what I do every single yeah, week. Obviously yeah, obviously so you don't even have a It's always yeah. a little bit different, but I'll back what he said. You know, I'm, I I probably I picked it up from him. Is doing a lot of praying during the game and and before and that way I can you know kind of like he said just be able to go out there with confidence, be able to. Play free, so. Yeah, I interviewed Keith Armstrong a few weeks ago, and I was just describing some of y'all's stats. And he was like, what are you doing? And he's like knocking on the table everywhere, and he's like getting mad at me for just reading what you guys had done. And I was like, I don't know how to interview you without talking about what they've done. But yeah. he obviously has a different mindset. Is that something you guys have noticed about him as the superstition when it comes to how you guys are playing? Um, you know, I, I don't know that. I know that we don't really ever, we don't really ever talk about um, – Stats, I know yeah, that. Um, yeah. I don't remember so, the last time we ever talked yeah, about we, stats. Yeah, <laughs> now so we, I know why. Yeah, we've never. I think every week we're really. The numbers you shall not speak of is yeah. essentially his, his mindset. No. I've, I've always, the best I've had it described is I had a coach when I was young in the league, and he always said, no matter how good you're doing, no matter how bad you're doing, he's like, look, as a kicker, as a punter in this league, like you're going to have good mm -hmm. games, you're going to have tough games. Like that's, mm -hmm. just part of, that's just part of the league. And he always said, you're, you're zero for zero. Doesn't matter if you've hit every field goal or if you've missed every field goal. You're zero for zero. And I think sure. that mentality is, hey, it, it really doesn't matter what's happened in the past. The only thing that we're focused on is is the next kick. Yeah. Um, and I think that's something that you know we try to do and, and try to go out there with that, that mentality and that focus. All right. Well, we have plenty more coming up here on Buccaneers Total Access from the Hooters Owls Nest with Ryan Suckup and Jake Camarda, brought to you by Frontier and Hooters. This is Buccaneers Radio. Welcome back into Buccaneers Total Access from the Hooters Now Owls Nest. I'm joined by Ryan Suckup and Jake Camarda. And, uh, you know, I was thinking about how for you guys, both of you getting drafted is probably kind of a rarity in terms of a team's special teams unit for both kickers to have been drafted. Is that something that you guys ever talked about early on or even talked about some of the, the different experiences with getting drafted? I don't know if we've talked a ton about that, but <laughs> we, we can't all be fourth round draft picks. Right? Oh, <laughs> <that's sad. laughs> <laughs> yeah, some of us have to wait till the very last. Some of you have to be irrelevant. Yeah, yeah. Some right. of us can't all be Mr. Irrelevant. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to hear it. That's true. Yeah. I feel like he probably got more attention at that draft pick that much later than yeah, a fourth rounder. Yeah, I'm not rounder. out here making shirts saying I'm Mr. Irrelevant, <laughs> all right? There's a big difference. So also, did uh, were you aware of the pranks that he has regarding his Mr. Irrelevant status? Have you heard about this? Oh, it's it's still one of my favorite yeah. things. It cracks I know me. I know he's a little bit of a prankster. I don't know if I know all the Mr. Irrelevant pranks. You yeah. Know, now we don't have one on the team, so I feel like you're allowed to talk about it. Yeah. You would never talk about it when Grant was here. In right. Have Did I heard about it? Right. No, I, I don't think I got Grant. No. So basically, like I, whenever you know, <laughs> yeah, for years everybody be like, oh, weren't you Mr. Irrelevant? So I'd be like, yeah, and they'd be like, man, don't you get all kind of stuff for that? And so I just kind of like. You do get some gifts, but it's yeah. nothing crazy. And I, I always just played it up like, yeah, you got a, you know, I got a truck, I got a watch, I got, you know, <laughs> Disney gives you a million bucks. Like just kind of slide, just kind of slip that in there. Slides in there. And, I'll, and uh, which of course is not true, but yeah. um, all remember, these Mr. Relevance are just spending their money in their yeah. head. <laughs> and then sure enough, when I got to Tennessee, we had a Mr. Relevant one year, and I felt so bad about this. But one of the tight ends, 
he set me up and I had to I had to play along with it and the poor kid for about two or three weeks thought he was getting a getting a big check coming in the mail that, that <laughs> Did never you came. you finally just tell him? Yeah, I think I finally told him. Yeah, you and, felt uh, too bad. I just, yeah. That's oh. what I love. You have this prank nature, but you have like a limit. Like you're very much the guy that's like, ah, oh, but now I feel bad <laughs> about it. So you, I did. So you said you're aware of this this prank, uh, no, love I'm of pranks. I'm aware of this guy. Has, has he been, has it been at your expense at some point so far? No, we flipped it on him. Oh. I don't think you've gotten me. Yeah, I don't know. Have you gotten me? I, we kind of got you. <laughs> I was gonna say, if he doesn't remember, Zach? I don't think it was that good. On your birthday? Oh, I don't know if it's a yeah, prank, yeah, yeah, but we got, we got you. What'd yeah, you yeah, do? Yeah. That's true. This is true. All right, so I, we started this, actually, a guy named Ben Jones. He's a center in Tennessee. Mm -hmm. And he started this years ago. If it's your birthday, it doesn't matter who you are, whether you're a player, whether you're the head coach, the general manager, it, it does not matter. Anybody that's in the building, if it's your birthday, you get a pie to the face. And oh. so he would get anybody. So he would got me for years, you know, anyway. So I kind of brought that tradition down to Tampa a few years Love back. Love it. And it started with Zach. His birthday was right yeah. before the Super Bowl, a couple weeks or two before. <laughs> and I have a great video of just coming up after practice. We set him up, you know, Bam, right told him some guys in the equipment room needed him. I popped out from behind the corner. Just yep. Actually, had a pretty nice little vertical coming up behind <laughs> him. And had to, I was pretty proud Good of that. Good uppercut. Yeah. And uh, pied him in the face, which then... I have now been on the uh, receiving end of yeah, that that's the, the last problem. two years. That's so, the problem that, with friends. But I deserve it. I deserve it, so <laughs> yeah. I can't be mad. So I actually was at a kicking event. I think it was um, maybe Martine Gramatica was there with me, and yep. Uh, yep. it was like a kicking for kids event over yep. the stadium, and it was on my birthday. And Zach and uh, this guy over here, they set me up good. I was sitting there teaching kids how to kick. Aww. They had me turn the other way. I was trying to do a good thing, and I, I took a pie to the face on my birthday. So. Zach, Zach deserves more credit for that one. Yeah. He, he, he had a really good mastermind behind yep. that. That's incredible. Yep. I love that. That's and good. I'm That's also really happy my birthday's in the off season. <laughs> yeah, um, you should be. Yes. So, for Jake, for you, getting drafted, as he mentioned, you know, fourth round selection over here, pretty pretty high for a punter. Was Did you feel pressure in that? Or for you, how did you approach the idea of getting drafted as a punter that high and, and just how you felt about what that was going to mean for your contribution here? You talk about after the fact when yeah. I got here? Mm -hmm. I mean... I think the way I look at it is after the fact is like I'm just I'm just another guy on the team, you know. Yeah. Whether you're a first round pick, a seventh round pick, an undrafted free agent, um, a guy that just got picked up. I mean, we're all just here. We're all just part of the team. We're all just trying to do whatever we can to make it. So you you can take that number of where you get taken and all that. You can take that and just you can kind of throw it out the back in, yeah. in a sense and just. You know, you're just here to, to do one thing, get the job done. So Yeah. And do you feel like I, I know that you and a lot of your fellow rookies have been asked to play really big roles on the team this year. And how has it been watching um, so many of these guys you came in with have to contribute in, in really big ways? And why do you think that your classes, you know, as we watch Cade get the game winning touchdown? Mm -hmm. And you know, why do you think your class has been able to come in and have success so quickly? I mean, let's just let's just talk about Cade yes. for a second. I mean, how how cool that is incredible. that? You know, yeah. Cade getting a, a game winning touchdown yesterday. That was that was awesome. But um, just you know, all the guys in this in this rookie class, this has been really cool to be around them and, and get to know them better. Um, you know, whether we're doing our little rookie academy stuff or just just seeing each other as we came into you know uh, rookie minicamp uh, through OTAs through everything just. Just growing closer to those guys and just being around them, it's just been really cool to, to see them and see how much they care about this game and how they work, and it's just it's just been really cool. We're talking to Jake Martin, and Ryan Suckup. What did you like? I know you guys get the whole rookie program, the rookie club it's called, where you guys do a lot of different things, um, both from football standpoint but mainly off the field stuff together. Um, what did you love about that program most? What are some of the things that you can think about that have been important for your experience here and, and you guys as a whole? Yeah, I think something that I definitely like about what we've done so far is we, we found a way to get to know each other. Um, when we came in, we basically had a time where we stood up on a stage in front of everybody and just talked about who we are, where we're from, uh, just kind of like a get to know you. And so like that kind of off, off the rip, it's just like, hey, this is who I am. Mm -hmm. This is what it's about me. And it's like, you get to learn just so much about everybody else. Um, and to start it off like that, I, I just thought that was really cool. Cause it's like, this guy is from here and this is what he's been through. And it's like, wow, I can, I can relate to this guy. And yeah. it's like, man, maybe I don't relate as much to this guy, but I can learn more about this guy. And it's just been cool to get to, to do that. And then, and then the events that we've gotten to do and, just, just being around each other, it's been, it's been really cool. That's great. And as you talk about getting to know each other, 
I feel like there are some stereotypes around the league of different position groups have certain personalities, right? Um, what would you say it is personality-wise that it takes to do each of your roles? Are there certain traits that you've seen a lot of the guys across the league share or that you think you need to have for success? So, Ryan, why don't we start with you? Yeah, that's a, you know, that's a good question. I think everybody, there's, there's probably um, around the league, if you looked across the league, there's, there's probably all different types of personalities. And, uh, you know, I think one thing for me that, uh, okay, there we you're, go. You're right. <laughs> Water went down yeah. the wrong way. <laughs> Golly. <laughs> Keep going, uh, Ryan. Yeah, I got you. Um, I think for me, one thing I try to do is uh, is try to stay like very level-headed, um, not get too high, not to get too low, whether it's good or bad. Um, it's a, Our position is a little bit different. Like I don't want to get too hyped, too pumped before the game because mm -hmm. um, what I do is a very um, – like a very skilled, and uh, I just try to stay as level as possible. So that's something that's helped me. Other guys, they may do it differently, um, but I think that's something that's helped me be able to go out and perform. Yeah. What about you, Jake? In regards to uh, just being around the, the guys on the team? The personality that it takes to, to do your position and what yeah. you think really helps you be good at it in that sense. I would be honest. I think everyone is so different. Yeah. I mean, you've got so many, like, just looking, if you look at all the, the, the kickers and punters around the league, you're going to find the most polar opposite mm -hmm. human yeah. beings ever, <laughs> right? I mean, you're going to have guys out there that are, like, super, super confident over the top, and then you're going to have guys that are, like, super laid back, really chilled, not going to say much. And it's just, like, there's such a different dynamic between every single person that there is. Um, but I think that just, like, I don't know, I just think being who you are. You know, I don't think you got to try and be a certain person or try and be anyone different because at the end of the day, guys are going to accept you for the person that you are, not for the person that you aren't. So. Yeah. I remember when you first came in, you told me you had a on-field persona, and uh, I think it was equated to something along the lines of the Joker is what you told me. Was yeah. this accurate, or were you just making something up that day? No, 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 no. I... I <laughs> I think I've told Ryan this a few times. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about yeah. Okay, great. We can, he can vouch, yes. So no, tell me I, about this. No, I like to... So the Joker's one of my favorite favorite movie characters ever. Mm -hmm. Heath Ledger's Joker. Let's just get yep. set that record straight. <laughs> yes. Um, that, that, that's kind of something that, that stemmed from, from George. It's like a, like a Joker mentality. Mm -hmm. um, one, of, one of my teammates, um, Devontae Wyatt, he, um, um, back at Georgia, he, he called me the Joker over at Georgia. And... Um, it's just something that stemmed from there. It's just like a, I don't know if you want to call it just like a, like a crazy, almost like psychopath mentality, <laughs> but, um, that's kind of sort of, kind of sort of what it is where like you go on the field and it's just like, I don't know. It's, it's almost like you turn into like a different, kind of like a different character. I feel like I hear that from other positions. Like I'm used to hearing that from like a linebacker. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I might think this is the first time I've heard it from a punter, but Hey, if it gets 74 yards, that's right. It works, man. Keep, I'm, a, keep I'm being the Joker. I'm a different cat sometimes. Yeah, yeah, a little I'm bit. Sometimes. Okay, so Ryan, how are the two of you most different? As you talk about how different all these personalities are, tell <laughs> tell me the the ways that the two of you are different, other than as we established earlier that you have slightly more experience years yeah. wise, is how we'll put it. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, I think uh, J Jake and I probably are a lot different. Um, you know, Jake is uh, he's he's young, he's fiery, and um, which I respect. I kind of like it's kind of fun to be around that a little bit, you know. Um, and so I think it's, I think honestly, we kind of, we kind of probably level each other out a little bit where I can be like very, uh, you know, very, very flatlined and just try to <laughs> stay very focused on game day. And, and Jake's kind of more of the guy bringing the energy. Yeah. And, uh, and so um, it gets fun. I, I, I've, we, I think we've been, I think I've really enjoyed being around Jake. And, um, you know, ever since we started working together this spring when, once he got drafted and, um, you know, it's uh, it's good good to be around a young guy like him, and he's he's got a good head on his shoulders too, mm. and that's um, something I'm really thankful for. I know there's some, you know, um, I I'm just thankful that that, that we've got Jake. Yeah, uh, you know that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, not, yeah. not anything bad about anything else, but I just I, I like the way he goes about his business. That's and, cool. Um, very humble, very humble guy, and um, he's fun to work with every day. I like that. So yeah. for Jake, for you getting a chance to come in and have a kicker like Ryan, who's had so much success and experience in this league, how did that help you as a rookie coming in? And because I know how much time the specialist ends up spending together. I mean, it would have a huge influence one way or the other on what your experience here is like and everything. So having a guy like Ryan to learn mm -hmm. from, how has that helped you? I've probably asked Ryan about a million questions <laughs> and he'll and he'll he'll agree with that i yeah. mean i've probably asked him 
I bet during OTAs, rookie mini camp, training camp, he was probably going home and he was like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> this kid. Finally. Yeah. <laughs> I can breathe a little bit. Like, golly, this kid asked me so many questions. Yeah. Preseason. He's probably. I need a breather. <laughs> yeah. I, I guarantee you. He was like, man, I need a breather. But um, just ha- just having a guy to learn from that's that's done it for a while. Um, he's been through way more situations than anything that I've ever been through. So anything that comes up for me, I'm just like, oh, I know who to ask. <laughs> <laughs> I got a guy who Another I can ask. Another question for Ryan. Yeah, I'll just I'll just throw it to him. And but it's it's been cool, obviously, to have a, a guy like Ryan on your team, um, a guy to look up to, and a guy that you you kind of see the way that he does it. You know, like he do he's doing it the right way. You know, he's there's a lot of people out there that might not do it the right way. Mm-hmm. He's doing it the right way. That's and it's great. just it's very I think everybody sees it, you know. It's like it's not even like a like a question. Mm-hmm. It's just like people are like Ryan's doing it like that, that that's how it's supposed to be done and like you know, he talked about me having a level head. This guy's got a level head in his shoulders. It's 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 incredible. So it's been cool. That's awesome. And <clears throat> so how would you rate I mean, obviously we know yesterday was incredible. Overall, whole season for you as a rookie so far, compared to maybe the expectations you had for yourself and just how you feel like you've done. Because I think especially a lot of times as a punter, we all don't know what you're being asked to do or what you're trying to do, especially when it comes to a lot of the directional stuff, things like that. So tell me where you would rate yourself on a lot of the different aspects of what you're being asked to do, both and I guess also with kickoffs as well. Got a lot. A lot. Got a long, got a lot, long way to go. <laughs> got a lot of work yeah. to keep working on. Um, I think we've done some good stuff. Um, I think there's a lot more stuff that we can continue to improve on. You can always improve, but I, I mean, me and Ryan were talking earlier. I, I, I'm, I'm a little hard on myself a lot of times, and I, I, I probably demand a lot from myself, so I'm never really going to be satisfied with just about anything. So, you know, just I think so far we've done some good things, but, you know, moving forward, you know, I think there's a lot more that we could that we can do to, to get a lot better, so... All right, well, we have more coming up here on Buccaneers Total Access from the Hooters Owls Nest with Ryan Suckup and Jake Camarda, brought to you by Frontier <coughs> Hooters. This is Buccaneers Radio. Welcome back into Buccaneers Total Access from the Hooters Owls Nest. I'm joined by Ryan Suckup and Jake Camarda, just two of the heroes of the win in the game yesterday. Um, I-, I would love to hear each of you, career path-wise, how you got to where you are now in terms of even becoming a kicker or punter early on. Um, so Ryan, why don't we start with you of what got you to, into the kicking part and then was there to just look back and think that you would have ever been in this position, when would you have maybe seen that a, <clears throat> as successful of an NFL career like this was possible? Yeah, it's, um, it's kind of interesting for me. I, uh, people always ask me, like, hey, when do you start playing football? And the, the truth is, is that I just kind of played everything except football growing up. <laughs> um, so I, pl- I played soccer, basketball, baseball, and golf. And um, I loved it. I thought I had plenty of sports going on in my freshman year of high school. The, in North Carolina, where I grew up, the, uh, the soccer season and football season are both in the fall. And the soccer coach had a son like three or four years before me that was a really good soccer player, and he ended up kicking for the football team, and he had scholarship offers to do both. Wow. And I think he maybe saw some similarities between me and his son, and so he really encouraged me to go play football. And for the longest time, I kept telling him, no, I said, I don't want to be the kicker. Like, I got <laughs> this, I got basketball coming up, I got baseball and golf in the spring, I'm good, I don't want to play five. I got all the cool things, right? Right, right. You know? I, thought, I thought to myself, nobody wants to be the kicker, you know? <laughs> and um, anyway, finally, the week of the first game, uh, on that, like, Tuesday, he goes, hey, I'm not letting you practice soccer today. I'm making you go down to the football field. Wow. And so I went down to football practice, and I just had fun with it. And... Um, you know, since then it's been been really cool. You know, the Lord's really blessed it and um, got into it from that standpoint. And um, you know, never would have imagined that I would still be, you know, 36 years old and getting to pack my suitcase for training camp every year to go yeah. away for, for camp. So uh, it's been been really a blessing. How many I told you so's did you get from that guy? You know, um, <laughs> not a ton, but like it's still fun. I'll still hear from him every now and again, yeah. and um, I think he knows that uh, I am very appreciative yeah. of like his uh, willingness and you know his his thought to go ahead and give me that opportunity. That was, was pretty cool of him. That's great. Jake, what about you? Yeah, I definitely didn't think I was going to be playing football. I thought I was going to be a professional baseball player, but I can't hit, so that's <laughs> that kind of... That does seem like a bit of a problem. Yeah, that kind of took away from all the hopes and dreams of that. Um, yeah, I mean, I started playing football um, when I was in eighth grade. I played flag football for a while, but I started playing in eighth grade. Uh, definitely didn't think it was going to work then. I My first ever practice my first ever play in practice I broke my finger oh. so it's just destined for me to 
be a football player. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I mean, I started... The enforcer. Yeah, I mean, I started kicking footballs when I was in eighth grade, but I really started, like, actually, like, caring about it when I was a, a freshman. And uh, my uncle uh, was a kicker in uh, college, and my cousin kicked in high school. And I went to his games in high school, <clears throat> and I always thought, I was like, man, that's pretty cool. I want to try that out. So tried it out. My uncle was my first coach. He kicked over at Furman, and... Um, he kind of, you know, helped me out, showed me the ropes, and then I kind of just started to really enjoy it. Ended up dropping baseball and kind of ran with football and ended up being fortunate enough and blessed to be here. I don't think we often hear much about a punter's combine experience. It's not really typically a headline you read much about. Um, you, however, that was the exception. So, I, first of all, you seems like you definitely were athletic enough you could have done other things, too. <laughs> So did you just love punting more, or was it you felt like it was the best chance for the future? What was the thing that made you say, I know I want to do this instead? And, and have you maybe wished you could have also used the athleticism in a few other things? You know, go, looking back at it now, I wish that I could go back and play high school football and be a wide receiver, but the size that I am now. Mm. Like, if I could have the same height and weight that I am now and the same speed, I'd love to go back and play high school football. In other words, you're like, if I could have been a grown man in that high would school. Be, that would be fantastic. That'd be awesome. I feel like I would have so much fun doing that. Yeah, um, Yeah. I mean, I, I I played receiver a little bit when I was a freshman. Uh, I started our fir my first game. Um, I got targeted once, ended up being a pick, and I got benched after that. <laughs> Credit, though, I mean, the kid that took over my spot from there, he uh, had a great high school career, great college career, has gotten some chances in the league. So, so there you go. It makes me feel, feel it better makes me, about it. It makes me it, feel yeah. a lot better that, like, at least if my spot was taken, it was by it was by a guy. And you, you, know, it was by a and you got to show off at the comp. Was that pretty fun for you to be, like, representing for for the brand, as they would say? Yeah. Very, very good for the brand. Yeah, <laughs> it's very good for the brand. Yeah, I like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Com combine, was, combine was fun, for sure. That yeah. was definitely that was a good time. Yeah. <laughs> and speaking of for the brand, uh, you got a shout-out from none other than Pat McAfee himself after the game. I feel good like, is that, like, you know, the, the mecca shout-out for punters, right? It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> were, you, were you a fan of his? For sure, I for feel sure. Like it's required, oh, yeah. for sure. Um, so I'm assuming you also would have been a combine star, Ryan. Is that is that fair? Uh, you know, I, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, Jake runs really, really well. So we'll, 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 <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll leave it at that. Yeah, I, uh, I'll stick to uh, trying to trying to put it through the uprights. Without giving anything away, do you ever make the case for some trick plays, uh, either at the punting or the holder role, Jake? I mean, I remember a couple of weeks ago we were down. A lot of wide receivers. Yeah. That that week that we had a bunch of guys hurt. I mean, I wanted to go play so bad. You you were I really did. I, wa I wanted to go play so bad. I really did. They were like, ha. I would have I would have vetoed it. I can't have my can't have my guy, can't have my guy get hurt. Ryan would not yeah. have let that happen. Can't have my guy get hurt. You'd, you'd have been standing there in the way. That's yeah. amazing. Uh, we're talking to Jake Camarda and Ryan Suckup. So, I often think about when I watch you guys out there and how much time, again, you guys are just you guys and Zach out there doing stuff at practice, how much you're not doing things with the rest of the team. And then in the game in particular, it's like you are just out on an island, it feels like all the time, especially in really big moments. What is the hardest part of that in what is typically such a team sport? Do you feel like the fact that you guys at least have each other kind of supplement some of that, or does it feel kind of lonely sometimes compared to maybe the, the rest of the team? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, our position's unique. Uh, I think one of the challenges of, like, during a game, one of the challenges is, like, staying in the game. Because, you know, you may only have one play, you know, in a quarter, but it's going to be a big, it's going to be an important play, yeah. and you got to be ready. So that's, there's a challenge to that. And then as far as, you know, at practice, like, we get really good at, you know, hanging and making small, <laughs> making conversation. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, we, uh, we we stick together. So it's, uh, it's a fun friendship, and, um, you know, I'm thankful for guys like Zach and Jake. You know, they, they make it fun, and uh, they make it where we, you know, you enjoy coming to work every day. Does the team ever give you guys grief for, like, they're out there and, like, running a ton, sweating, whatever, and you yes. guys are done? Yeah. <laughs> That was you know, every, quick every, yes. everybody always is like, "Man, you guys have it good," but I don't want your job on Sundays. Oh, that's interesting. What, that's what people always say: is they don't, they would not want to have to deal with uh, the pressure that comes on Sundays. That's so, fair. Yeah. I yeah. I agree with that 100. Yeah. percent Um, I, what do you feel like is the hardest part of each of your jobs, and especially if it's something maybe that people wouldn't know that haven't haven't done it? Jake, what about you? 
I mean, honestly, I'm going to say battle in the wind, maybe. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, you, as, as a punter, you know, you get out on a windy day. I mean, you you let go of that football, it, it is in the air. Yeah. It is in free float. Yeah. And if that wind's blowing, it makes it just a little bit more difficult mm-hmm. to, to control that ball and where it is. So I, that's probably... That'd be my answer, I'd yeah. say. Yeah, I, you, I, that was where my head first went, was yeah. like the conditions, you know, yeah. stuff that... Um, Things that you can't really control. Right, whether yeah. wind or, you know, weather or, you know, fields or yeah. just whatever's going on. There's all kind of stuff that, um, yeah, that, that's just that's part of it. That's so, part of it, yeah. yeah. So do you prefer, what would be your ideal conditions and what are the things other than just wind that can make it challenging, whether it's the actual surface you're playing on, the things, different things about a stadium, you know, other things about the weather. Like, what would you say are kind of the ideal and the like least ideal things for each of you? Well, that's going to be big, different answers. Yeah, that's why I thought it'd be interesting. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I would say if you have a good natural grass field, there's nothing better than playing on natural grass. Um, you know, as far as temperature, yeah. I mean, we're, we're fortunate here in Tampa where we get a lot of like really nice days. Oh, yeah. And um, but yeah, I would say you know, good 75 degree day, no wind. Um, real grass. Yeah, real grass. Hey, life is good. Outside or inside matter if there, if as long as there's no wind, do you care? Uh, no, if there's no wind, I don't, I don't care too much one way or the other. Yeah. But it is always nice, like one of the most, you know, we talk, you talk about stress. Like you're looking at, you're looking at the seven day forecast. Like all right, man, winds are at out of the north at you know thir- thirteen this Sunday. It's like all right, we're gonna be in for a battle. Yeah, there we go. Where and we it's go? that stuff that's kind of out of our control. Uh, and likewise, when you get a, a nice weather report, when you know winds are going to be calm or Fire whatever, up. yeah, you're yeah. like, all right, let's go. Yeah. You know, so what you said that you felt like your answers would be different. What are the things that you feel like are different for the two of you about conditions that matter? Um, <laughs> different fields. Yeah. We're way different on the kind of fields that we like. Yeah, that's right. Interesting. Like we like I, like I think we'll both agree. But there's nothing better than a good grass field. Yeah. Like yeah. you get in a good good like Bermuda grass field. I mean. Yeah. There ain't nothing better than that. Yeah. Yep. Um, especially on a hot, like he's going to say 75 degrees. I'm going to say 95 degrees, but that's just, that's just me. Um, it's, it's actually funny. He likes, he likes turf. Like when we find a turf field, he'll like a turf field that the, the turf's a little bit longer. I like it when it's a little bit shorter. Yeah. It's like the, it's like the little, little things. Tiny it, kind things. Of, it kind of depends, a little personal preference stuff. So I like yeah. that. That's good. Um, how about the hardest places to kick or punt. I know you haven't gotten to go to a ton yet. I haven't, haven't been around very long. Um, but you, I feel like maybe you can even answer for, for him but yeah. since you've played ev- everywhere at this point. Yeah, yeah. I, think, uh, I think I finally crossed them all off the list a yeah. few, few years ago. So, um, yeah, I think there's a lot of challenging places. Um, obviously, you think about any, any of the places up north where you get – you know, you get yep. some cold. Um, the Midwest is honestly maybe tougher. Like the Chicago's, mm. the uh, like I played in Kansas City for five years, and it is windy and it is cold out there. Uh, that's a tough place to do it. Um, you know, I think we go to Cleveland here in a few weeks. So Cleveland, you, you can catch a day in Cleveland that you know that can be really difficult. Uh, Buffalo comes to mind, um, and then even you know the the interesting thing is is believe it or not, even in the, so far we we've been pretty fortunate this year. I remember my first year in Tampa. I was like, this is the w- every week. It was so windy, and I was like, this place. It, this I, is the worst. My, practice. Brett Kern, my the punter up in Tennessee, he always calls. Uh, he or he's not. He played there for 14 years, and he always called Tampa the Buffalo of the South because oh, it's how so windy. Funny. Yeah, he always talked about the wind every time he played here. He's like, man, that place is. You know, it's open end zones on both yeah. sides, and so you know, we actually get some pretty good wind down here. Um, but you know, all in all, I think I'd have to go with some of the the places in the in the Midwest where you get the cold on top of it. Yeah. So the. Uh, kicker holder relationship has got to be one of the most important, least talked about things in the NFL. Maybe um, for you, Jake, what is it like to do that job? And that may be part of when I asked about some of the mo- the most underrated or hardest aspects of your jobs. Is it maybe even the holder part more than the punter part of the uh, what people don't realize about how challenging this is to do? You know, holding holding is definitely a, it's definitely an art that. A lot of people don't really get, but I tell you what: when you got a guy like Zach that's snapping to you and he's dealing, he makes it a lot easier uh, as a holder. Yeah. And I I know Ryan will attest yeah. to that too. I mean, when when you got a good a good snapper like Zach who can just deal it back to you and, and throw you really consistent laces, that's makes makes our job a lot easier. So. Yeah, that yeah. makes a big deal, and it yeah. makes a difference for you as a kicker as well. Yeah, no doubt. And uh, man, Zach and Jake, both those guys do a great job. Like Zach's great at snapping. Jake has come in and done a really good job holding that. And we, you know, we have been fortunate to really develop that chemistry quickly. I think that's something that um, 
can take some time sometimes. Yeah. Like once you, you know, and, and so I'm, it's been awesome that we've been able to work together and they both have just done a great job. So I'm, I'm really thankful to get to work with them. Do you remember, Jake, when you first started holding, was there like some fear? I, I personally just imagine picturing my hand getting taken off. Was there fear <laughs> of this at the very beginning when you first started holding? No, so, so I started holding when I was in college. Um, and no, I don't think I ever had the fear of getting my hand taken off because I'm, I'm around some dudes that can really kick yeah. really well. Um, so no, I, I, I was never really nervous about that. But I will say, um, my in college, my first ever play was a hold. I could not have been more happy that it was a hold. <laughs> As compared to a punt. It was great to just go ahead and get the nerves out the yeah. way. Yeah. You just run on the yeah. field. It's like, all right, we're going to get a hold in. But that was also my first time ever holding in a game. So I was, was, wow. was nerve-wracking then, too. But, go. yeah, it's, yeah. Do you feel like getting to play at a school like Georgia was helpful in the transition to the NFL as compared to, like, a tiny school? Yeah. Hands out. Hands in, out. in what way? I feel like you've, when, you, when, you, when you go to a – prestigious university like the University of Georgia. All, all I know is we beat him when I was in South Carolina. That's all I know. Casey. Which uh, unfortunately was not so much of an overlap time. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> he, Jake was in like, you know, third grade, yeah. but that's okay. Exactly. <laughs> Wait, do, you, do you do often the like, you know, way back in the day, do you give him one of those things if you don't you don't know the true yeah. stuff back in the Oh day. yeah, we were talking about that with like the rookie stuff, you know. You talk about the like, nowadays the stuff I had to do as a rookie compared to, you know, yeah. these guys got got it easy now. Okay? You give you him know? the back when I walked uphill both that's ways. That's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. In, in two feet of snow, you <laughs> know. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. the key. That's right. Um I do think something you guys have in common that I have always wondered how maybe you two in particular feel about this. Kickers and punters seem to get to live in more anonymity than a lot of other players do. Is that accurate? It's a big word for me. Oh my, yeah, it's that Georgia education. <laughs> big you know? word for me. Big you. word. People don't always know who you are. Did that, that help? <laughs> yeah, that was, no, I had no idea where you were with that I love, so I that love that he admitted it. I feel like most yeah. people would have just, just made something up. with it. Yeah, they'd have just given, like, you know, I just give 110% effort and. Uh, <laughs> well, that's what I was gonna really hope you were gonna ask Ryan for the, <laughs> yeah. first, for the first answer. <laughs> so, yeah, take it away. You are more anonymous. Yes. Yeah, because people don't always know. Is, is that? Do you think that's true and, and fair that the kickers and punters don't always get recognized as often as other people? Uh, yeah, I think that's true. Yeah. We, you know, we also probably don't stand out like some of the yeah. other some of the other big guys. Yeah, but, they um, walk in there six six we, three hundred, right, and it's right. like we, you probably yeah. do something. We yeah. talk all the time. If you're a kicker or punter, you, you don't want to be noticed. You just want to yeah. be a guy that flies under the radar. Yeah. Do you guys ever wish you did get a little bit more of the? I don't know, attention or no, you, yeah, this, no. this part of the personality it takes yep. with this job yeah, this even, you're happy just, no. that's yep. so funny. I love I feel like, it's, I feel like it goes exactly how it's supposed to. <laughs> no, <clears throat> nobody knows. And if they do, it's thankfully, hopefully for that's game winning right. situations. That's right. All right. We have one more segment coming up here on Buccaneers Total Access from the Hooters Owls Nest with Ryan Suckup and Jake Camarda brought to you by Frontier and Hooters. This is Buccaneers Radio. It's time for our final segment here on Buccaneers Total Access from the Hooters Owls Nest. We're joined by Ryan Suckup and Jake Camarda. Uh, so now you got Germany this week. Um, tell me for each of you guys, what are some of the challenges or exciting things about this trip? Ryan, why don't we start with you? Yeah, I would say the first thing that pops in my mind is like, you know, we're going to have a whatever it is, nine and a half, ten hour flight, something like that. Uh, so I think we fly over Thursday after practice. We'll wake up. It'll be Friday morning there. So uh, trying to get a little rest, get a little recovery on the way over there if, we, if you can. I don't know if we'll be able to sleep on the plane or not, but we'll see how that goes. So I think I would say that's a challenge. And then, you know, you're just not, you know, you kind of get into your routine here. You got your, you know, all the stuff, all your equipment, all the, everything that you have here. So we won't have that for a few days. So, um, you know, we'll just do our best to adapt and, um, you know, just be ready to rock and roll come Sunday. Yeah. Jake, what about you? Yeah, pretty much what he said. Yeah, uh, can't say that I've done this before. Yeah. So uh, I think we'll kind of just play it by ear, kind of just see what happens. Is this some of the the million questions that you've you've asked him about? I don't think I've asked you a lot of questions about Europe. Yeah, we, no, yeah, we haven't, we haven't gotten into this I haven't, yet. Yeah, we yeah. haven't gotten it. How many of these we'll games have you done at this point? I've only played one. Just I, I, the pl one. I played in London um, just once. Yeah, so that's been my second. Yeah. What do you feel like you learned from that experience that might be able to apply to this? Um. I'm asking the question I, yeah. for you, Jake, by the way. This is, I appreciate yeah, you're welcome. That. <laughs> yeah. So the one thing I learned, we played in Wembley and it was a grass field. <laughs> and I guess they like to water oh, the grass I, over there so that the years. soccer ball will like skip off the field. Oh. So they keep it like very damp. And it was very challenging to kick yeah. on. So I remember that. A little slip and slide it action was very, going on. It was very slippery. So I remember that was a challenge. But um, I think this one might be field turf that we're playing on. I got to check and see. So yeah. anyway. Um, how about just now where the season is at, the feeling in the locker room after that win, what did that feel like that did for you guys? And especially maybe even going into a Germany game, did that feel 
maybe even more important with with a week like this. What did you feel like the the felt the feeling in the locker room was, Jake? After this week, the feeling in the locker room was. I mean, I would definitely use the word electric to describe yeah. it. Yeah. It was it was pretty awesome. You know, anytime you're you're coming off of a loss, let alone multiple, mm -hmm. um, it's always good to get a win, and not just get a win. Like if we had gotten a win in like a blowout fashion, it would have been awesome, obviously. But to get a win where you kind of learn a little bit more about a team, and where it's like, man, it 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 was gritty to get this win, and yeah. it comes down to the wire and. You know, you learn a lot about a team in a, in a situation like that, especially a team that had, in previous games, not won, to where you're playing a, a good Rams opponent, and it's like, hey, this is going to come down to the wire. We're yeah. going to figure this out. It was it was great. It was really cool to just see, uh, see the atmosphere in the locker room after that, of just how excited everybody was and happy everybody was. So what would you say are the goals each of you have uh, for yourselves the rest of the season? Is that something that... Are you guys goal-oriented people, kind of one game at a time? What, what are some of the things? What, we can start with you, Ryan. Yeah, I think uh, I just try to take it and uh, just try to figure out, like we talked about earlier, like being zero for zero. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just try to go out and, uh, and and what can I do this week to make sure that I'm ready to go. And I just take it, honestly, that's been an approach that's really helped me. I think just taking it, really, it sounds so cliche, <laughs> but like just one week and one kick at a time. Yeah. Um, and hopefully if we can stack that up long enough, then then hopefully, you know, both of us will be able to contribute and, and help contribute to some to a lot of wins. Yeah. What about you, Jake? What are some of those goals that you have? I, I'm, I'm going to say pretty much the same thing that he said. You know, we, had, we actually had a, a chapel a couple weeks back where uh, it was talking about just not thinking too much about the future and not thinking too much about the path, past, but just being real present and thinking about what am I doing right now in the moment. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what it is. Just try to be your best in the moment that you're in. And then once that moment's gone, all right, let's go to the next one. Let's just be the best we can be in, in that very moment. So I'd say that that's what it is. Not focusing so much on the end goal because you can get way too wrapped up in that, but just focusing on the present, what's going on now, and you know, just trying to be the best you can be in that moment and letting everything else you know, take care of itself. Are y'all Ted Lasso fans? I have not seen it. I've heard it's no, hilarious. I oh, well, I had a great <clears throat> reference, but no one's going to get it now. It's really upsetting. Can, but you, you got to be a goldfish for everybody out there that's a Ted Lasso that. fan. You know this? <clears throat> I know Sandy that. 10-second memory. 10-second memory. I do know that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that. goldfish. That's All what right. he tells the players is right. uh, you got to yeah. be a goldfish, and it okay. feels like that's what that feels like the perfect yeah. thing yeah. for the two of you guys is to be a goldfish. We're talking to Ryan Suckup and Jake Camarda. Um, I would love to hear if other guys on the team had to do your job, who do you think would be best and worst at it? First thing that comes to mind is Mike Edwards because <laughs> Mike told me that he's going to be our kickoff guy. Oh, interesting. So me and Mike had a good talk today, <laughs> and uh, we mutually agreed that Mike will be taking over the kickoff duties for the mm. rest of the season. Love that. So we'll see what happens. You're going to inform Keith Armstrong. Might have to run that by the coaches. Don't know what they're going to say. I don't think it's necessary. But I think you should just try it without talking and, to him. Me and Mike talked, and, and he, he feels confident. He thinks so. he can do this. Have you witnessed him try any sort of kicking before? Nope. Haven't witnessed it happen. We did talk about maybe going to a field later today and just seeing what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, <laughs> Ryan was here. He heard this. He, I heard this. This he was true. a witness. This is I true. can tell Ryan is like, I, I am saying nothing. I am with like plausible <laughs> deniability. <laughs> Right. this entire thing. So I don't know. Right. We'll see. Uh, that's great. So we think Mike Edwards is your vote for taking over your job, at least on kickoffs. How about how about punts? Ooh, punts. Who would be a good punt? I, I got mine. I think I've, I'm pretty sure I've seen a clip of Tom like taking a snap on. That's true. He third did. Or People forget Tom. Like, Tom held in college. Yeah. That's yeah. true. So I, you know, what can't he do? What can't, right? He does right? everything. You know, right? that's a so good point. That's, there's mine. That's your Tom and is your answer got, for all got, of it. He's got them. He's going to hold shoes too. Yeah, that's yeah. He's going to hold it answer. for himself while <laughs> he <laughs> kicks it. Is what I'm hearing. <laughs> hey, he's Tom Brady. You know? Yeah, he's Absolutely. Tom Brady. You, you just never know who. Well, I mean, why not? Why yep. not? Um, how about for the questions you get from fans? What are the things when people meet you? The biggest things that people ask. What's it like playing on a team with Tom? Yeah, I'd say that's, <laughs> that's, the, that's, number, that's yeah. the number one. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's so funny. Yep. You're like, can't get no respect here as a kicker and punter. It's always got to be about Tom, right? Hey, and that is a good thing. So that is a that's, good uh, thing. Yeah. yeah, no, obviously, you know, we get a chance to play with the greatest player that's yeah. ever played. Yeah. I mean, it's, sometimes you think about that and you're like, this is, it's pretty amazing that we, we get to do that. So um, I would say, yeah, certainly get asked about time a lot, which is, which is awesome. That's amazing. Well, that's the hands down number one. That, yeah. yeah, that makes sense. That's yep. 
the same for me with my job. So yeah. I think that's yep. just yeah. everybody's question at this yep. point. Well, thank you guys so much for coming on here. I know it's a crazy week with Germany, so I really appreciate you guys taking the time and congrats on a huge game for you guys individually and the win this last week and, and good luck. Yeah. Sure, congrats on the uh, future special teams player of the week. Here, here, in here in about two days. Here in about two days. All right, that's going to do it for us on talking. Buccaneers Total Access from the Hooters Owls Nest, brought to you by Frontier and Hooters. This is Buccaneers Radio.